Welcome to the Invite Health Podcast, where our degreed healthcare professionals are excited to offer you the most important health and wellness information you need to make informed choices about your health. You can learn more about the products discussed in each of these episodes and all that Invite Health has to offer at www.invitehealth.com slash podcast. First time customers can use promo code podcast at checkout for an additional 15% off your first purchase. Let's get started. For decades, we've known that fish oils are very important for health. They nourish your brain and your eyes. In fact, they help make your brain. Your brain has a high fat content and a lot of this is fat from fish oils. And in fact, there is data that fish oils reduce the risk of dementias and reduce the risk of developing depression. And they are needed for rods and cones, for fine vision, for color vision. And interestingly, the level of fish oils declines in the brain and eyes with age. So it's good to either eat more fish or take a fish oil supplement. Uh, fish oils and fish have a role in muscle, but also bone health. They're very important for your heart. Uh, they help prevent the heart from racing inordinately. They help prevent sudden cardiac death, which alone makes it important to eat fish or take a fish oil supplement. So you don't need any other reason besides lowering the risk of sudden cardiac death. There's many, many, many studies showing this. Sudden cardiac death, the heart stops beating, and it doesn't start again. And it's a killer. It kills over 200,000 Americans each year. So these fish oils become inordinately important. Um... They help lower a type of fat some people are not familiar with called triglycerides. Triglycerides are one of the greasy fats in your bloodstream that can lead to heart disease and strokes. And they're also, if they're too high, they're bad for the liver. They could be bad for the kidneys. They're certainly bad for the heart. Now, fish oils, they supply long-chain fatty acids. The most well-known are, and the dominant ones actually, are EPA and DHA. They're actually a category of fats called polyunsaturated fatty acids, which can be abbreviated PUFAs. Now, these healthy fats, the EPA and DHA, have noteworthy anti-inflammatory activity. They should be part of an anti-inflammatory diet, you know, like a diet low in red meat and processed foods and sugars and high in vegetables and fruits and healthy foods, whole grains. So they have strong anti-inflammatory activity, and they're now proven to have properties that help prevent and help fight, help assuage arthritis. So they are good for your joints. So welcome to my episode. Um, fish oils are good for your joints, and krill might be superior. Uh, my name is Jerry Hickey. I'm a licensed pharmacist who specializes in nutrition. Welcome to the episode. You can find all of our episodes for free wherever you listen to podcasts or just go to invitehealth.com forward slash podcast. And if you could, please subscribe and leave a review. You can also find Invite on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at Invite Health. So you can eat fish. And there's, of course, cleaner, healthier type fish. Um, you know, the, the fish oils, they make a part of the brain. They make a part of your eyes. They they have a lot of benefits. They They have... Some ability, it seems, to lower the risk of breast cancer and possibly colon cancer. They are involved with muscle health. They are involved with bone health. They are involved with the rate of the heart rhythm. They are involved with correcting the immune system so it's not overly active because our immune system is a very powerful arsenal of, of weapons, a very powerful army. It's all the armed forces in one our immune system. So fish oils do help prevent us from an overactive immune system. But then there's uh, krill oil, which is actually what I take. I do eat fish. Uh, my wife is always making bronzini or barramundi or uh, sole, but salmon. Salmon's common in the house. But I take krill oil capsules too every day. There's a number of things in krill oil that are very healthy for you that are not common in the diet. It's not just fish oils. Uh, krill is called uh, Euphasia superba. That's a Latin binomial name. It's a tiny crustacean. So it's a, a relative, it's a much smaller relative of, of shrimp. 
So if you're allergic to shrimp, you're going to be allergic to krill. Krill is the most common biomass, living biomass, organic uh, biological biomass in the oceans. I mean, you, when you look at the krill uh, floating on top of the sea in Antarctica, it's covered in this red krill. The redness comes from a combination of the fish oils a little bit, but mostly from uh, an antioxidant, a very powerful carotenoid called astaxanthin. Astaxanthin's pinkish. Uh, it gives colors to salmon, and it gives color to flamingos, and a little bit to crabs and lobsters, etc. But it's very high in the krill, the astaxanthin. So it's a tiny crustacean, and like salmon, it's loaded with fish oils. But it seems that these are more absorbable than the fish oils in a fish oil capsule. They're attached to phospholipids. Phospholipids in and of themselves are incredibly important for humans. They're anti-inflammatory. They're needed for your memory. They're needed for your nerve function. They're needed for muscle coordination. They're needed to keep the liver healthy. They're needed for your good cholesterol, HDL, to clean out your arteries and prevent a buildup of fat in the arteries or build up a cholesterol in the arterial walls. So they're incredibly important, the phospholipids. They're key to good memory. They're key to protecting the brain. So krill supplies phospholipids, which is good in itself. You'll also get phospholipids a little bit in grains. You'll get it in legumes and you get it in fish. And because the phospholipids are attached to the fish oils, the fish oils are not damaged by your digestive juices and your stomach acids. So it, it's, it's intact, and these phospholipids aid the absorption of the fish oils. So a smaller krill oil capsule can actually give you more fish oils into your body, can actually get more fish oils into your body many times than a big fish oil capsule. So it's an excellent source. Plus, if you get certain brands, they're really fresh and clean. Now, the antioxidant uh, excuse me, the anti-inflammatory activity of a krill is amplified by the high concentration of phospholipids, especially phosphatidylcholine. Phosphatidylcholine has the additional benefit of getting into your brain and creating acetylcholine for your memory and for logic and solving problems and remembering things and learning. So the fish oils are attached to a great deal of these phospholipids, especially phosphatidylcholine, and it makes the fish oils better, more active for your health in general, but especially for your joint health. So let's get into that. The University of Adelaide, along with research institutions, uh, other research institutions in, in Australia, like uh, CSIRO is a big research institution over there, they just released a new study on krill oil and arthritic joints. It's published in the September issue of the American Journal of Clinical Nutrition. But interestingly, the discussion starts off with how common is osteoarthritis? How painful can it be? How disabling is it? Uh, there's about 100 forms of arthritis. Some of them you'll never hear about. Um, the most common is osteoarthritis, which is the wear and tear when people get in like their hip or their knee. The second most common, but nowhere as common as osteoarthritis, is rheumatoid arthritis. And then there's like lupus arthritis, and psoriatic arthritis. There's less and fewer and fewer of these cases as you go down the line. So forms of arthritis are extremely rare. So osteoarthritis is pretty common. That's the one that you see the athletes getting knee replacement surgery for or older people getting knee replacement surgery for typically. So they just published uh, in the American Journal of Clinical Nutrition in September issue, like I mentioned, uh, this discussion and they also say that NSAIDs are often used for this, but there's a problem. So let me tell you that problem. NSAIDs could be really toxic. They can have a lot of side effects. They could be dangerous. NSAIDs can trigger a stroke within the first week of use. They could trigger severe bleeding ulcers that are hard for doctors to find. I mean, literally people bleed to death in emergency rooms from these bleeding ulcers. When you go to have uh, a test done on your digestive tract and, and it's it's, um, you make an appointment for it, the doctors give you things to clean out your intestines and your digestive tract. So it's easy for them to find things and see things, right? Like when you get a colonoscopy. But if you have a bleeding ulcer from like uh, um, ibuprofen or, you know, like Advil or Nuprin or Motrin or Aleve 
or any of the prescriptions. There's many of these prescription drugs like diclofenac, which is called Voltaren. Uh, if you get a bleeding ulcer from these and you, you brought it into the emergency room, it's a mess in it. There's all kinds of fluids and foods and mucus and everything. They can't, many times they can't find where the bleedings come from. I believe the figure is over 19,000 people a year bleed to death like that in emergency rooms and hospitals from these drugs. But they do trigger heart attacks, they do trigger strokes, they do cause high blood pressure, they do cause heart failure, they do cause kidney damage, they can be toxic to the eyes, they are toxic to your hearing. So you don't want to be on these drugs long term for your knees if you don't have to. So these researchers are saying, well, NSAIDs are a problem. We need an option. So is there a safer yet still effective uh, option? And the answer is yes, fish oils and especially krill oil. So this new study is 235 otherwise healthy adults. They range in age between 40 to 65. They're all diagnosed with mild to moderate osteoarthritis at four different uh, institutions in, in Australia, four different clinics. Uh, the knee pain really dropped with the krill oil. Now, this is interesting. You can affect your pain with your brain. So... When they give a placebo for pain, that helps pain. So anything that helps better than placebo, placebo is real. And the krill oil was much better for pain than placebo, than the power of the mind. And this was in a randomized fashion, you know, placebo-controlled fashion, over a six-month period. So the krill truly had an effect on reducing knee pain, above and beyond what the brain can do. And it reduced stiffness. These people were able to function better. They were less stiff getting out of bed and playing sports, etc. It improved their physical function. It improved their quality of life. And the quill was extremely safe to use. So, I mean, the knee was working better. They had a greater range of motion. That's how much you can bend your knee without pain, how far you could walk, how comfortable you were walking up and downstairs. Now, that's not the only study like this. PLOS One had a study. PLOS One is a great American group of journals that we pay for out of taxpayer funds, and it's meant to disseminate studies to places where doctors and uh, clinicians cannot afford to get these studies. So, for instance, a, 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 uh, a, a doctor with a single practice in some small town in Wyoming doesn't really have access to all these big libraries at like Tufts and Harvard, etc., so they can go to PLOS One and get the studies for free. So PLOS One's a great journal, group of journals. It's not just one journal. So this was perform performed by uh, Japanese researchers in Japan in uh, arthrit arthritis clinics throughout Japan. But there was also a, a bunch of Chinese academic research institutions involved. It was a randomized placebo-controlled human clinical trial. So these are state-of-the-art studies I'm talking about. It was adults with knee pain, arthritis. And it was krill oil versus placebo. They only gave it for 30 days, which is really a short time. But very quickly, it reduced knee pain. Very quickly, it was helping improve knee stiffness. Uh, for instance, when they were trying to sleep at night, they had less knee pain. It was easier to sleep. When they were standing, when they were holding something, when they were walking, they had a bigger improvement in range of motion versus placebo. Once again, placebo, the, the power of the brain on, 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 on pain is amazing. So once again, the curl worked. But, but this is in the uh, uh, Journal of the American College of Nutrition, this is a different kind of study. That's researchers in Canada. It's a randomized placebo-controlled human clinical trial. So once again, a gold standard study. And it's 90 patients with inflammation and arthritis. They had an increase in their CRP. Let me explain what that is. I get that tested twice a year for this reason. There's autoimmune diseases in my family, but there's also heart attacks in my family. And CRP is released from the liver when you're inflamed. So it's a proxy for inflammation. So if it goes up, we know you're inflamed. If it goes down, your inflammation is subsiding. We don't know what CRP itself does. It might even help protect you a little bit. We're not quite sure what CRP does. But we know it goes up when you're inflamed. And they can measure. They can quantify and qualify what's going on. Because they, uh, like normal, depends on the lab. Some labs, normal is one to three because they have a different way of testing it. Other labs, it's one or less. Uh, so if it's elevated a little bit, you're developing plaque in your arteries. If it's elevated more, not only are you developing plaque in your arteries, hardening of the arteries, it's called atherogenesis, the genesis of plaque in the arteries. Uh, but not only that, uh, that plaque is highly inflamed and unstable, like there's bleeding sores on the outside of that plaque. 
that plaque is like melted candle wax, that cholesterol plaque, and it can break off and cause a stroke or a heart attack. So you want to keep your eye on your CRP. It stands for C-reactive protein. And within 30 days, krill oil reduced CRP by 31%. Whereas the CRP and the people in placebo actually increased. So there was a big difference between the krill oil and the people in placebo. It went up in the people in placebo because they're getting more and more inflamed. But krill oil reduced pain scores by 29% within the first couple of weeks. It reduced stiffness by 20% and an improved functional impairment by 23% within the first several weeks. Functional impairment is, hey, I can't, I can't climb the stairs that easily. I can't get on the golf course. I can't play pickleball. So here's a related type of story. Uh, because fish oils are good for your muscles. Now, krill not only has the fish oils, it has choline. It has phosphatidylcholine, which improves brain, nerve, eye, muscle coordination. So that's cool, like if you're a pitcher or a golfer or something. But not only that, fish oils are good for your muscles. And the choline and the phosphatidylcholine allows muscles to work. It creates something called acetylcholine that allows muscles to fire. So quills are better for your muscles, in my opinion, than fish oils. So this is the University of Glasgow, which would be in Scotland, the University of Western Australia, and Nottingham Trent University, which would be England, it's in the Journal of Clinical Nutrition, and it's 102 men and women over the age of 65. They did not exercise regularly. They got some activity, not much. So that was at baseline. Then they, so at baseline means before they gave them the krill oil or the placebo. So at baseline, they looked at their muscles and their muscle strength at six weeks and at six months. And here's what they found. From baseline, on krill oil, and people that were not active, knee strength improved. Knee strength actually improved over a six-month supplementation. But so did their grip strength. That's really interesting. All the people with stronger grip strength, they're much less likely to die prematurely. Muscle thickness actually improved. This is important because it helps stabilize your knees and makes your muscles strong. You're less likely to fall and break your knee. You're less likely to fall and break a hip. But also when you stabilize the muscles around the knee, it helps with knee pain. So not only are you helping with falling, you're helping the knee preserve the health of the knee. So the krill oil over a six month period improved muscle strength and muscle size in older people to a clinically important degree, a clinically significant degree. Of course, you should exercise. I get a lot of exercise. I ride a bike. I play pickleball. Uh, I lift weights. I do a lot of walking. I do hiking when I can, like if I'm in California or someplace. Um, I swim. I get a lot of exercise. Exercise is important. I get exercise every day. But I do take two krill every morning. Even though I eat fish... Several times a week, I'm doing krill. It lowers inflammation. It reduces your risk of dementia. It reduces your risk of sudden cardiac death. It's great for your liver. It helps get fat out of your liver. That's the choline content. Uh, it's good for your muscles. It's good for your bones. There's no reason not to take krill if you get a good for formula. And I would take two a day. Two a day with uh, meh, breakfast. Do it with breakfast. Get out, get out of the way. <laughs> this way you remember. Uh, thanks for listening. You could find all of our episodes for free or wherever you listen to uh, podcasts or just go to invitehealth.com forward slash podcast and they want me to say please subscribe and leave a review and I think that's important if you could oblige us. You could find all of our episodes for free wherever you listen. So there you go. But you can also find us on uh, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram at Invite Health. Thanks for listening. Hope to see you next time on another episode of the Invite Health Podcast and it's Jerry Hickey signing off. Have a great day.